Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at probability distributions so we can answer questions from exercise 6a. Now a probability distribution is a way that we can spread out our probabilities or distribute our probabilities amongst a certain amount of outcomes that can um, that can happen for a given event. And here we're going to look at particularly discrete probability distributions, so whole number of events, so a certain defined number of events happening. And what we're going to look at here is a keyword of a random variable. Now a random variable, first of all a variable is a letter that has an associated number value to it or a given range of number values to it. A random variable is a variable whose value depends upon the outcome of a random event. So um, so for example, say if we've got, um, if we roll a dice five times, the number of sixes rolled would be a random variable. So we'd have a certain amount of outcomes, maybe three sixes will appear, and that amount of sixes that appear will have a given probability attached to it. So your random variable can have multiple outcomes, and each of those outcomes will have a certain probability attached to it. Uh, okay, so the range of values the random variable can take is usually called a sample space and is often drawn in a table, and I'll show you one of those in a second. A discrete variable can only take certain countable numerical values. So discrete meaning whole numbers, remember back to discrete data, is exactly the same word applying here. So for example, the number of people um, has to be a whole number. So in this chapter is going to particularly focus on discrete random variables. Um, these are values which can only take certain numerical values, each of which can be assigned a probability. So for example, the number of times a 1 is rolled when you roll a dice 10 times. It can take uh, certain numerical values and each of those can be assigned a probability. Okay, so let's have a look at a question then. So our random variable for this question here, x, is the score on a fair dice when it is rolled. So in this case here, we can draw ourselves out a table of all of the different outcomes of this event and each of the probabilities for this event. So the, the letter that goes on the top, that's the little x. Just pay particular attention to capital X and little x here. <coughs> little x represents some, or just individual outcomes of this probability, the capital X, represents the whole probability distribution. Um, so it could represent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with each of these probabilities associated to it. And on the bottom row here, um, the probability of an observation is equal to the number that appears above it. So the probability of rolling a 1 is a sixth, probability of rolling a 2 is a sixth, etc, etc, etc. So in this case, the probability of the score when a fair dice is rolled is equal to the top row. Okay, so yeah, so that's what a probability um, random variable is. Okay, let's have a look at another slightly more complicated random variable where we have different probabilities as we go along. So three fair dice are tossed. Uh, write down all the possible outcomes when the three heads are tossed and then the part B will make a probability distribution out of it. So we can get heads, heads, heads and we can get all of these different outcomes. So a random variable x, we'll call it, <coughs> is defined as the number of heads when the three coins have been tossed. And we can write this in a table and we'll have a look at what a probability mass function is afterwards. So the different outcomes that we can have for the number of heads that we can achieve is either 0, 1, 2 or 3. Now the probability of uh, flipping zero heads, there's just one of those outcomes out of eight possible outcomes there. So it's one out of eight. The probability of flipping one head, well we've got one head here, we've got one head here, and we've got one head here. So there's three outcomes out of the possible eight here. So three out of eight. For two, the probability of uh, flipping two heads, we've got one here, one here, and one here. So that's three out of eight. And then the probability of, rolling th of flipping three heads is one out of eight. So this is how this probability distribution will look. X is the probability of, X is the distribution 
of the number of heads that are tossed out of three coins. Okay, let's now have a look at a probability mass function. So this summarizes the data above in a slightly different way. And this is how well it's going to happen. We have the probability of x equals x equals, and then a big curvy type bracket, and we have all the possible outcomes listed like this. So the probability is equal to 1 8 when x is equal to 0 or 3 heads, and the probability is equal to 3 8 when the number of heads is equal to 1 or 2. So you've got to be familiar with both different ways of writing a probability distribution. Um, this one here is uh, working out your probability. What we also need on this probability distribution here is a zero at the end for otherwise. Okay, So we need three points here in this case here because we've got a probability of one eighth appearing twice, one here and one here, probability of three eighths appearing here and here, and then zero if there are any other heads we need to consider. Okay, so each probability is included here, the outcome of which uh, takes a corresponding probability and they are listed here. So the probability goes first and then when this probability happens goes second. Okay, notice here, just do a little double check once you've finished any of these questions that all of your probabilities add up to one. Okay, let's go through a slightly different question here now. A biased four-sided dice with faces one, two, three, and four. Uh, the number on the bottom of the face is modelled as the variable x. So if you can imagine a tetrahedron with a, a flat base, this is what a four-sided dice looks like. It's going to have uh, one face here, one face here, one face on the back, and one face underneath, so one, two, three, and four, and whenever it lands, it's going to land bottom up, and whatever number's on the bottom is what we're going to take as our random variable. And the way that we assign probabilities is given by this function here. The probability of x, the random variable, equaling a certain outcome, one, two, three, or four, is equal to k over that number, the number of the outcome x. Okay, so k here is effectively a portion type number that we're going to need to work out and x is the number of the outcome that was on our dice before. So a good idea about starting with this is to um, draw out a nice little table. Great. Okay, so let's start plugging in the values into this probability function here. When the probability, when the outcome is 1, the probability of that outcome is going to be k OK, we don't know yet, so we'll just have to leave that in there, over x. And x is the number 1. x is representing the value of our outcome, so that's going to be over 1. We can see here how the x's match up here, here, and here. For 2, 2 is now going to be our outcome, so the probability of that's going to be k over 2. I imagine here k is probably going to be some fraction. <clears throat> in this case here, k is going to be, uh, so the probability of 3 uh, landing on the bottom is going to be k over 3. And the probability of a 4 landing on the bottom is going to be k over 4. So we've noticed here that all the x numbers have appeared on the bottom of the fraction because that's how our probability distribution is defined. And to work out k, well, we know um, that all the probabilities must add up to equal 1. So when we add all of this together to equal 1, and we solve a little equation, we're going to get k is equal to 12 over 25. OK, so what we need to do now is substitute this back in. So the first one's going to be k over 1, so that's 12 over 25. Uh, 12 over 25 over 2 is going to be 6 over 25. Next one's 4 over 25. Next one's going to be 3 over 25. And you can always do a double final check that that all adds up to 1. OK. So what we need to do now is find certain probabilities um, given these rules that we're going to apply here. So we've got a certain number of questions here and we'll have to work out these probabilities. So the probability that a random variable comes out to be a number that's strictly greater than 2, well any of the values strictly greater than 2 could equal 3 or 4. So combining these two probabilities together, we get 7 out of 25. 
For the probability that our outcome is in between 1 and 4, but not including 1 and 4, that can only be 2 and 3. So add together those probabilities, and we get 10 over 25. For part 3, find the probability that our outcome is greater than 4, but not including 4. Well, there's no outcomes that are greater than 4, so that is equal to 0. Okay, so when you see this capital X here, think about the outcome that is these certain values here. Um, yeah, that's what, a, that's what a random variable is. It defines the number of outcomes that can happen and gives an associated probability to all of those different outcomes. Right, final question before you have a go at one yourself then. So the spinner below is spun until it lands on a red and it's spun four times in total. Or, or until it's spun four times in total. Find the probability distribution of the random variable s, the number of times the spinner is spun. So we have a total of, it has to at least spin once, uh, straight onto the red. It could spin twice, it could go blue, then red. It could spin three times, that would be blue, blue, then red. Or it could spin four times, and that could either be blue, 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 red, or blue, 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 blue because we, we're setting a maximum here effectively of 4. So the probability that our S distribution here is equal to 1, so the probability that the outcome is just one spin on this dice, <coughs> is going to equal 2 out of 5. We've got equal sections here, 2 of them are red, 3 of them are blue, so that's just 2 out of 5, so we'll put that in there. The probability that we spin um, our disc two times and then the second time it lands on a red well if it lands on a red the second time it must have landed on a blue the first time because we we ignore blue ones effectively so what we say here is that it's three times three over five for the probability of a blue then the probability of red so we get six out of 25 the probability of spinning a spinner three times before it lands on a red, so that must be a blue, blue, then a red, is given by 3 over 5 times 3 over 5 times 2 over 5, <coughs> which is 18 over 125. <coughs> and <coughs> we can work out 4 individually, or we can do a little uh, cheats way of doing it, knowing that these probabilities must add up to 1, so effectively doing 1 minus 2 over 5 plus 6 over 25 plus 18 over 125, and we get 27 over 125. Another way of doing it would be to work out the individual probabilities of going blue, 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 red, and then adding that on to the probability of blue, 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 blue. So part of these questions here is deciphering what they're asking for us to do. So do take your time in thinking about what's the situation here. Can I visualise it? Can I conduct an experiment of my own on it? And if it makes sense then, then start having a go at the question. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two here then. Just to highlight this one here for you, a discrete uniform distribution here is when all of the probabilities are equal, no matter what number, no matter what outcome you have, a uniform distribution is when everything's the same. A bit like school uniform, everyone's the same. Uniform distribution is all the probabilities the same. All right then, that's your little tip for question nine. Pause the video and have a go at this question. All right then, well done for having a go at these questions here then. Uh, so what we have first in question six is a probability distribution function like we have here. Now, generally I prefer writing my probabilities out using a table. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to have x on the top row. I'm going to have all the probabilities associated to that x value on the bottom. And we'll only need the values from one to four. So one, two, three, and four. So for 1, when we work out the probability of 1, we're going to read off the top probability here. And the probability here, when x is 1, is going to be k times x. Now here I'm using an x value of 1, so the probability here is k. 
when the probability when we're looking for the outcome of two we're going to use this bottom row here because that's where the two x value is and we're going to substitute x in so it'd be two take away one which is one and then times by k so that's going to be a k as well for three when the outcome is three we're going to use this top row again here because that's where the x value is so it's going to be three times k and for the bottom value here, we're going to do 4 to take away 1, which is 3, times by k, so that's 3k. Uh, what we need to do now is work out the value of k. So what I know is true is that all of my probabilities must add up to 1. So what I can do is add those up to make 1. I've got 6, 7, 8 here. So 8k equals 1. So therefore k is equal to 1 over 8. So what we could say here is that this probability here is a 1 over 8, this probability here is a 1 over 8, this probability here is a 3 over 8, and this probability here is a 3 over 8 as well. For part B, this is going to be useful. Find the probability that our random variable is greater than 1, not including 1. So it's going to be 2 or more. So that's going to be all of those probabilities added up, which gives us 7 out of 8. Okay, here for question 9, what we have is the random variable x takes any integer value from 1 to 50. Given that x is a uniform distribution, so effectively the probability where x is equal to x is all going to be the same. It's all going to be 1 out of 50 because we have 50 integers here. So, for the first question here, work out the probability that our outcome is equal to 1. In fact, what you could think of this as is effectively you've got 50 cards and you're effectively choosing one card at random. Therefore, all the cards have the same probability of coming out, 1 out of 50. So in this case here, the probability of pulling the card number 1 out is just 1 out of 50. Uh, the probability of pulling out the cards from 28 and above, well, you'll have 32 possible outcomes there. If you're including 28, so your probability here is going to be 32 out of 50. We could simplify this to 16 out of 25. No, sorry, not 32, 22. I do apologise. 22, yeah, because you've got... 2, which gets you up to 30, and then 30 up to 50 is 20. So, yeah, it would be uh, 11 out of 25. Okay, the probability from <coughs> 13 to 42, what we've effectively got here, let's think about how many cards we're going to have in this region here. <coughs> we're going to have 14, and we're also going to have up to 41. So, we'll have 41. Let's add on 7 to get us up to 21, so that's 27, I'd say, 27 out of 50. There are 27 cards there, effectively, um, to get you from 14 up to um, 41. We have to include both the ends, though, so actually I think this probably would be 28. If we think about it, we'll have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we'll have 21, so that's 7, and then add on 20 more, so that's going to be 28. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have to be careful about the fact you're including both ends. Um, if you were to just do a straight subtraction, you're working out how many cards are, what's the difference between them. But if you want to work out how many cards you have in total, you need to include both ends. That's why we need a 28 up there, which could be simplified to 14 out of 50. Uh, 25, sorry. All right then, so there we are. That's quite a difficult chapter. You do need lots of practice of this. So have a go at every question, probably from exercise 6a. Make sure you're a master of it and uh, go to your teacher for your help, for help if you need any making sure you persevere through those difficult ones, obviously. Right, thanks very much for watching.